My name is Yosima Reyes. I am a queer poet, Latino, originalmente del estado de Guerrero, Mexico. Um, and I was raised in Eastside, San Jose. Um, I came to this country when I was three, and I feel like since then I've always inhabited a queer spirit. Like, I've always known um, I was a little bit more feminine than other boys. And if I didn't know, other people made sure <laughs> to reassure me of that. Um, so I've always known. There hasn't been never any doubt in my mind that this is the spirit I was born with. Because I was raised by my grandmother and my grandfather, not by my mom or my father. Um, but I think with them, they never policed me. So there was really never any like, oh, you have to be a boy or this is where boys do. My, grandma, my grandparents were really nonchalant and they would let me do whatever I wanted. And, and yeah, never really policed me around gender. And I grew up in the I grew up in the hood, so in the hood definitely there's all this constant policing around masculinity. Um, but I always had friends, um, and that's where I learned how to be witty and be quick with my tongue and use my words and defend myself and learn how to fight <laughs> in case somebody calls you something. Um, so I, I think I was able to manage that whole situation without necessarily being scarred by what people say because I've always had like a really tough exterior and now that I'm older I'm like oh okay I gotta work through that and not be so tough <laughs> works, I published a book for color boys who speak softly when I was around 19 or 20 so I feel like a lot of that earlier work was definitely capturing the emo like the first poem in that book was written when I was 17 the last one was written when I was 19 and I originally intentionally published that book simply because I wanted to capture what was it like to be a poor undocumented queer kid growing up in Eastside in San Jose what are the emotions that such person has um, and I feel like initially that that whole collection definitely um, captures the, the, those sentiments um, and it was because it was true I was queer I was Latino I was going and we were poor, my grandma was recycling bottles and cans, and who I had nobody to relate to, I couldn't talk to nobody about none of this stuff, so I always turned to writing to kind of vent that, about that isolation of the frustration of growing up within, within poverty and also embodying an identity that wasn't really celebrated or, you know, acknowledged. Um, so I wrote a lot about that. Now I'm 26 now, so that was like, for me, I feel like it's a long time ago. And now that I'm a lot older, I look at my work and the work that I'm producing now. And now it's definitely celebrating. I, I want to go back to celebrate the fact that I come from, from a rich culture and a rich history. And that I'm proud to be Latino. I'm proud to be undocumented. I'm proud to be Mexican. Because I feel like a lot of times what happens when we come out as queer, um, they tell us that our families are homophobic. And so we develop this kind of, this, this detachment for where we come from. Like a lot of us want to leave the hood or leave our families or not even go to family gatherings because we're afraid of what they're going to say. So I think one of the things that we don't get told enough as queer young people is that we're beautiful. I think that's one of the, the things that I, even in the, in, growing up and looking back, that's something that I've always kind of wanted somebody to kind of say that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ended up dating these tragic ass dudes and like, cool. but then that was beautiful in a way too because I learned through that. But I think we don't, we don't get acknowledged for, for being survivors or for coming from these places. It's acknowledging the resilience of, of having, of the pressures of waking up every day and saying, dude, this is my life. Looking around, I grew up sleeping on the living room floor. Like looking around your raggedy ass living room, your broke down ass apartment, and saying like, "This is my life," and choosing to get up and participate, and choosing to still be happy around that.